All right, everybody, welcome back to another episode of Redneck Racing. Today's video, <clears throat> we're going to be talking about what we got in mind for the 1966 Buick Skylark project. So, we've got this fancy new whiteboard out in the shop with a bunch of things outlined here. Um, just like a, a brief introduction, I guess, to where we plan on going with the car. So, as you can see, the, the, the order of things and how we plan on tearing the car is get the frame solid, then deal with the drivetrain and the rear end. Then we're going to wind up um, looking at the suspension and getting the ride height set up on it. The frame basically entails uh, getting the old roll cage out. As you guys saw uh, maybe in some of the other videos of the car, the roll cage that's in it has really big tubing and just the geometry and the angles of the bars are all over the place and it's not something that would pass tech inspection in 2022. So we're going to tear the old cage out and put a new cage in um, and just make sure everything is set up right chassis wise. There's a couple spots on the frame that we got to fix. We'll show you guys that probably in the next video. Um, then after that we're going to start working on the engine get the engine set up in the car, um, start working on it. We have a mock-up block, the 5.3 that we use for feeders. We'll probably use that as a mock-up block while I'm working on putting together the 6 liter. Um, got most of the parts to put the motor together and get it running, um, but again, we'll show that in another video. After we got the motor put together and in the car, and we have the car at the proper weight, um, motor and transmission, all that. Then we're gonna start looking at the suspension. So in order to make sure that the car has the proper ride height, you wanna weigh the car first and get the proper springs for what the car is gonna weigh. Once we figure out what kind of springs we need, <clears throat> then we're gonna go ahead and look at getting brakes for the car. Right now the car has all drum brakes on it and when you switch to disc brakes, you need to get a different spindle for it. Um, you can modify the original spindle, but just for the sake of making everything easier and the extra couple bucks to get a new spindle, we're just going to go that route. But we want to look at what the ride height of the car is going to be so we can determine what type of spindle we want to get, whether we want a stock ride height or a two inch drop. And then after that, we just have some odds and ends for it. Um, we took apart the rear end and looked at what was in it. It has a ridiculous gear ratio in it. I think it's like a 514 or a 511, somewhere in there. Um, so we're probably gonna wanna get a different gear ratio for it. We have another 12 bolt laying around. I think it's over in the other part of the barn. Hopefully that has a gear ratio that we can use. Um, and then the other thing that we wanna do with that is put a spool in it. It has a positive traction in it, which I believe is probably junk. The clutches in it are probably burned out. So I'm just gonna get a spool, put it in, and not worry about it it's just gonna be a race car and then yeah we, we're gonna get a, a wiring harness and a fuel system for the car I'm gonna be running a Terminator X and running kind of a hopefully a fuel system that's strong enough for the turbos later um, but it'll definitely be enough for running just the NAEFI for right now we got a, a little bit of filming of the car um, just like a walk around of everything that the car has in it right now as we got it so We'll start rolling that right now. All right, so we're gonna start in the front here. Um, there's not a whole lot going on yet. The car came without a motor or a transmission. Uh, we got a radiator and an electric fan. That's already there for us. Hopefully that electric fan works. Hopefully the radiator doesn't leak. We'll find all that out the hard way. It also has a transmission cooler. Hopefully that doesn't leak either. It also needs a front bumper. They like hacked the heck out of this front bumper or they did a massive wheelie and it slammed down at some point. Speaking of massive wheelies, um, if you guys haven't watched the Instagram stuff, it did used to be a race car back in the 90s. So you can see on the side of the car it says Stan Ubin. Um, he's some guy who <clears throat> owned a little bit of a, a shop down in Mount Morris, Illinois, and he raced it in Byron in Illinois back in the 90s. And from what I've been told, it ran 10s. I don't know if that's true or not. I haven't seen it run. It looks like it has some good stuff in it. So it probably did run that fast. Let's come around over here. So what we, what me and Peter did just right now is we tore apart the diff. This is probably the best part 
of this car is the whole like rear axle setup that's on it. It's really pretty good and I think we're going to be able to leave most of it the way it is. The suspension in the rear end has these nice monoleaf springs. These are what you want for drag racing. It's not what you want for street riding because it'll ride like crap on the street, but just one leaf on each side with these floaters here. So what these floaters do, as you can see, the leaf spring is riding in the groove here. And that allows the rear end to float on the leaf springs like this, along with the, the shackle sliders back here. And that way you can run a more aggressive suspension system like the ladder bars that are on here. These ladder bars do look a little bit sketchy, but I think they're going to work, at least for the time being. We're going to try them out, and if they don't work, it won't be too hard to try and put new stuff on later. Um, but yeah, that's kind of what the rear end looks like. Shortened 12 bolt, strange engineering axles. It has C-clip eliminators in it, so we're passing rules there. They cut the frame rails off in the back. Yeah, do you want to explain kind of how that works? So like, right about here, Somewhere about here, they hacked off the frame because originally the frame kind of like comes in like this, and then right about here is where the frame would be. But they smacked her off right here because they would need, they narrowed the rear end, and now the frame is over here. So it kind of goes like this, and there's like this box plate, and then comes back like that. Moving back up to the top of the car, as you can you can see in here real clearly. How big the wheel tubs are so that's pretty awesome we should be able to run probably like an 18 inch wide tire if we ever want to i think to start off with we'll probably do like a let's consider a small tire like a 28 by 10 and a half tire um, we definitely have room for all the expansion as far as tire width goes um, you can see the fuel cell that is in here needs some help probably this is the drive shaft for the car so when they were running it back in the 90s, it had a 455 big block Buick with a turbo 400 transmission, probably the, the old, Buick old Pontiac 400. So I'm going to try and get one of those for this, and hopefully we can reuse the cross member, the transmission cross member that's in the car, and this drive shaft, because it should all be good, plenty for the horsepower that I want to put to it, at least for right now. Speaking, can, of, speaking of horsepower, what kind of motor are you planning on putting on this thing? Yeah, so um, it's a 6 liter LS that you guys saw in uh, one of the other videos. I'm thinking I'm probably going to wind up taking the 5.3 uh, heads. Um, typically doing that gets you right around 500 horsepower at the flywheel, so it should put a little over 400 down to the wheels. And with a car that's gutted as much as this is, we'll show you the interior. She's gutted pretty good. Um, we should be running probably high 11s with it, like 1180 range. Which should be pretty good to run uh, street class at the WIR. Their uh, max dialing, or the lowest dialing you can run for that is 12 seconds flat. So we should definitely be able to cover the bracket for that. Alright, come over to the inside here. I'll show you how gutted everything is on the interior of the car. So, so yeah, the, um, yeah, as you saw right here, the door is completely gutted out. Um, the windows don't roll down at all, they just are up all the time, but the AC does work right here, you can see, so that's that's good. The roll cage is super out of date. We've got this weird X-brace thing in here, which uh, probably won't pass tech. I think the reason they did this is because where those ladder bars mount on the floor of the car, it mounts to right where these posts are, kind of like holding it up, so the ladder bars are pushing on like the, the roll cage. Um, the whole dash and everything is cut out as you can see. It has a steering wheel. It has a reduced ratio gearbox or some sort of, it's not a rack and pinion. It takes a lot of input in the steering wheel to turn the wheels as opposed to a normal car. You can turn the steering wheel three full turns in each direction to go full lock. You can see where they cut out quite a bit of the firewall to scooch the motor back or for the transmission maybe, I don't know. A lot of it is the whole middle chunk of the firewall is scooched out. There's a window net in it. We won't need that until we run like 10 seconds flat. So, you know, it looks cool though. 
All right, guys, so there's a little more of an in-depth look on what's going on in this car, um, kind of what it has in it going for it and what still needs to be done. Stay tuned for more videos on this to come. We're going to be working on this thing all winter, hopefully get it out to the track next summer. And like I said, we're going to try and go bracket racing with it, so we'll be going out on Saturdays, um, try and actually win some races with it. We're going to probably have to do a lot of testing on it, but we'll get there eventually. Um, make sure to subscribe to the channel. Check us out uh, the rest of our videos. Um, check us out on Instagram and all that good stuff. We'll catch you guys in the next video.